Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams, and this is our, our next video in this series. And uh, in the last video, we did a Windows Server, so naturally, we're going to do the Windows Host Machine. So, alright guys, so just like before, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, make sure you have installed and available appliances selected. Uh, scroll all the way down until you see Windows instead of Windows Server, Windows, go ahead and click it and hit next. Run these on the VM. All right, it's gonna say your server requirements are okay, sure. All right, here we go. And then it's gonna go ahead and do its little scan. Might take a little, a little longer. So, all right, we'll just let that think here. Now, if you guys watched my last video, I actually imported the um, I imported the images in using Fire Firefox, not Firefox, FileZilla. Oh my gosh, uh, I think these might be the last videos of the night. Anyways, uh, that's why we're already getting a ready to install. All right, so if you're wondering how we're how we did that, uh, go ahead and watch the video 2.1 before this using using Fire. FileZilla to, to speed up the process. So uh, essentially we just use FTP to put those in ahead of time so we can see them. Um, let's just go ahead and pretend like uh, you guys skipped that video. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and use this Windows 10 machine. Now I'm going to pretend like I don't have that. So once again, we hit download if we don't have it. It's going to say, hey, I'm redirecting you and that's fine. All right. And then... I'll just kind of move this over. We'll go ahead and we'll say, all right, what do we want? Okay, the stable version of Windows 10. What platform? All right, we're gonna use VMware. So that's actually what it's looking for. Now, how did I know that? Well, let's hop back over to GNS3 real quickly. Uh, you can tell by the file extension here. All right, VMDK. So, where am I? There you go. So you go ahead and hit download zip. And there you go. And you go ahead and download it. And then once you get done, you'll have a compressed folder. You're going to want to extract that. And you'll see the disk file after you are done. So I'm going to do that right now. So once you download it, once you extract the file, all right, I'm assuming you guys know how to extract the files. If not, shoot me an email. All right. And then we go to import. Once it's downloaded, we go to the extract folder and we just grab this file here. All right, we hit next. And once again, this process just takes a while through the GUI. So if you don't want to sit here and just watch paint dry, uh, I'll wait till we get a Ooh, look at that. The checksum's not correct. Oh, okay. If you guys get this error, uh, there's a good chance that the file's the wrong version, all right? Or it didn't download correctly, okay? So that's kind of that's kind of interesting. I'm going to just hit refresh here. And, uh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to re-download that. So let me go ahead and do that real quickly. And I will pause the video here, and I'll come right back once that starts importing. All right. All right, guys. I went ahead and I uh, re-downloaded it, uncompressed it, and it was still giving me a MD5 hashing error. So maybe they upgraded it, and this hash is no longer valid. I'm not too sure. The size is about correct. Uh, downloading it twice, I'm assuming it's okay. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. All right, so if that is the case, uh, you can always try this, and that is saying create a new version. All right, and here I'm just going to call it a uh, Windows 10. It it puts Windows in front of it, so I'm just going to say Windows 10. All right, see that. Look at that, ready to install. I found it right away because it kept the, the name. So when I right click this and said, create a new version, it like ignores the hash sum. All right, I know it sounds silly, but 
whatever. That's GNS3, little hiccups like that. So let's go ahead and hit next. Would you like to install? We'll hit yes. All right, there we go. There's the binary, we'll hit yes. All right, and it's telling you the credentials in case you need the credentials. <laughs> All right, there we go. And there we are. All right. So, yay. Once again, guys, how come that was so fast? Watch my last video when I use FileZilla. All right. So, here we are. I'm going to drop Windows 10. And I'm going to start it up. Now, while this is booting, see, we got a little little green guy there so while this is booting some things I should mention now when we actually lab everything up together um, I'll go through the process of optimizing these things in your lab environment these machines um, but the Windows 10 machine and the Windows 8 machine actually cannot be rearmed so you're gonna have to drag and drop a new machine in there when it expires in 90 days the Windows 7 one though that you download off of Microsoft's website you can rearm that a couple of times so um, but these things these lab environs are, environments are not really meant to, to last too long anyways right um, anyways and also make sure that you allow it to do its thing when it first boot up <laughs> do its thing that's my technical my technical talk right there so what do I mean by do its thing well it's gonna recognize things like you know KVMs being used it's gonna install the right drivers oh excuse me it's gonna install the right drivers it's gonna it's gonna go through several processes here um, there it is isn't that so cool guys look at that um, <laughs> you can't install Windows 10 that fast that easy right um, but what I mean is uh, you should be able to to get here let it boot up to the point where it's gonna ask you to like reset the computer at least I know the Windows 7 is like that and so um, and once again keep an eye out for your utilization especially when they're first booting okay uh, I'm not afraid to fail though so if you guys haven't noticed so while this thing is booting up oh, look at that beautiful and by the way it says that it's expired because it needs the internet to do its initial activation okay and then this right here will tell you you know will tell you that you have so many days blah 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 they even tell you to create a snapshot or to back it up in case it expires so you can use it again so nothing we're doing here is illegal um, but anyway, so you expect to see that. Uh, and you know what? This one actually looks like it's running okay out of the box. So um, I'm actually going to minimize that. But like like I said, let it do its thing. And this time, I'm going to drag and drop and now do the Windows 7. All right? So once again, if you don't see the image that you want, okay, uh, click the missing file, go to download, go to the website, get the file then go to import import it in it will upload it through the GUI once it uploads it through the GUI and everything checks out you'll see this ready to install alright so ready to install I'm gonna hit next I'm gonna hit yes I'm gonna hit next 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 Ta -da! now we have a Windows 10 machine oh come on guys that's so cool so let me go ahead and boot this this bad boy up all right, turn it green. I just want to kind of do that to show you. Yeah, it's it's literally that easy, guys. So uh, this way we can have Windows 10 machines in our environment. We can have Windows 7 machines in the environment. Uh, I am still not too sure about these machines myself um, because I've always done it through like the ISO, and you got yourself a blank hard drive and you install it the long way through GNS3, um, but you know not that long ago they added the windows ones and yeah they just they just work so which is really cool hey look at that I don't know if you guys can notice it but my mouse cursor is definitely not matching up with with the pointer you can also see the resolution there's a little wonky so how's my windows 10 doing not too bad not too bad so 
let's see here. These are essentially system prep too. So, geez, look at all, look at all that, even included in the BM. So, all right, good, good times, Windows 10. So, okay, like I said. We'll optimize these things a little bit later, but uh, this is what I meant by allowing them to do their thing. So, because um, some of them you're going to see it's installing drivers, right? See how it's installing some drivers, getting things ready. It looks like, oh, looks like I found the video driver finally. All right, that's nice. That's nice. All right. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. And with this Windows 7 machine, you're at least going to want to let it cook long enough to where it asks you to reboot it. So, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. all right, that one actually looks good enough to shut down. So I'm going to shut down Windows 10 and call it a success. All right. Once again, power these things down like you would any computer. Don't just shut off the VMs. Don't uh, hit the stop button or right click and force it down. So, oops, grabbed my, my title there. All right. And I'll let this thing just sit there for a while. I wonder how Windows 8 is. I'm actually pretty impressed with the, the canned ones from Microsoft so far. Definitely a lot, a lot uh, easier to deploy than how I did them in the past. So... All right, next. Ah, look at that. So we'll let that upload. So not too bad, not too bad. Even though I swore I uploaded that manually, but that's okay. So um, let's see here. There we go. See the Windows 7 is asking me to reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot it and see if it doesn't doesn't fix it. <laughs> we'll race it to see if Windows 8 can upload. So, and guys, once these are here, I mean they're here. You need to clone a machine. You need a whole other Windows 10 machine. Drag drop. You need another Windows 7. Drag drop. All right. As long as your computer can handle the resources, go for it. So, um, also in your NSC lab, you can have the machines that you're not currently working on, right? Like if you're practicing your LDAP, um, connecting it to your FortiGate uh, to do remote authentication. Maybe you don't need, oh, so sorry guys. Maybe you don't need the remote Windows machines on, right? Shut them off when you're not using them. That way it can speed things along. So um, be lucky you guys can't hear my poor little laptop here with <laughs> the more virtual machines I load up, it's like, no, kill me. So, all right, we'll let that boot. All right, so, ah, oh, should have done it through FileZilla. Uh, but once that uploads, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Windows 8 will run just fine also, uh, it's kind of neat to have all three, you know, flavors of Windows there to play with, including Windows Server. So I did skip the Windows 16, the Windows Server 16, because I noticed that one does not have a VM uh, already made for it. So we'd have to go the long way of, oh, excuse me, of, um, of uh, uploading the ISO, and then it uploads one of those blank hard drives that we used on one of the FortiGates earlier. And then you have to install it manually, so that kind of that kind of is a bummer. So, but that's okay. Got more dingling going on here. So, all right, guys. So I'm just gonna pause it real quick to let this finish, and I'm gonna verify that Windows 7 came up all right, and Windows 8 also booted up all right, and we will then check off our Windows host machines off of our list there for our goals. So, uh, give this just one moment to to upload all right let's see where we're at feels like I'm shouting too loud sorry guys if I scared you there so I went and I uh, grabbed a burrito I <laughs> get you not I really did you gotta love that pause button anyways went ahead and finished uploading the 8.1 dragged it dropped it so on and so forth right uh, let's go ahead and see Oh, yeah, there she is. That is definitely everyone's favorite Windows. Good old start screen. 
There we go. There it is. All right, very cool. Once again, right, expired. It will activate once it goes on the internet, then you'll have so many days, um, 90 days, I think it is, or probably explains down here. Anyways, this will give you 90 days. Okay, uh, so there you go. Yeah, that is definitely Windows 8. And then for kicks, I fired everything up and booted everything up and uh, I still don't like, oh, there we go. And like I said, guys, the CPU utilization will calm down power these things on once one at a time um, I did it just to kind of see if I couldn't melt my laptop and it's all it's all toning down now here but here we go here's also Windows 10 gotta love VNC there we go Windows 7 all right they all have the same background and then also a hey, Windows server so as you can see all the Windows hosts are now to chain installed and ready on GNS3. So um, just as kind of a, a last minute thought here, if you don't like the with IE11 name, you can configure the template, right? And take out that part so you don't have that appendix there. Um, it's probably how I'd prefer to do it. So let me just do that again. So just right click the template, configure template. Take that out there. Ugh. Now as you add machines, they'll come in like the Windows 10 machine where it just puts a little a little dash in the one instead of with IE Explorer. So as you can see here, that's just ugly, but I promise you going forward, it, it won't look too bad. So also, if you don't like to see the templates here, guys, remember that once you get done, you can just say installed appliances, and then you'll have a list of the devices that you have already installed. So, all right, guys, that is it. Those are getting the Windows machines into GNS3 for our advanced uh, NSC4 lab. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and add Ford Analyzer and Ford Manager into GNS3. So I will see you guys then.